Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Google Business Buzz. As always, I'm Ajay. I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Henry Heredia. And we've got a very special guest with us today. We are joined by our very own Elena. Now, Elena, it, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit. Tell our viewers a little bit about you and what you do here at OMG. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Um, I am our digital marketing specialist here. So um, I am our account rep and I've been here um, about four years or so already. Awesome. Four years of experience being on the ground with real clients. Um, we're super excited to bring you guys perspective from someone that's talking to clients every single day and helping them navigate this landscape. And in tandem with that, we've got a really cool topic. We've talked about paid advertising. This month, we're excited to focus on the Google Business Profile, or GBP for short. Um, this is a, a loaded and packed topic because this is a super valuable uh, platform, which almost all of our clients are on, or many of them are on. It ends up being a, a very popular starting package for a number of reasons, which we're going to get into. So, um, Henry, we've got the man himself, the product manager for the GBP and organic products here at OMG. What What is up with GBP in 2024? How is this platform becoming more and more relevant to our small businesses every day who depend on it? Hey, Jay. Elena, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, to all of our listeners and viewers, thanks for joining us as well. Um, so yes, Google Business Pro Organics, right? Google Organics, how we, how we define organics is that you're not paying for advertising to Google. It's not paid ads. That's the difference between organic marketing and paid advertising or paid marketing. Now, when we do organics, we know that people are searching, looking with intent, right? And the, the intent is what drives people to go into Google and say, hey, I need, a, I need to know what the best pizza around my neighborhood is. Right. And then you go into the Google Maps and Google is looking for that for that search engine results page to be very relevant to that user intent. Why does it do this? Because Google wants them to continue to use that platform. If Google starts giving users bad results, then people are going to stop using them. They're going to go to Bing. They're going to go to Yahoo. Um, but organic still is a very important tool in the marketing arsenal, but not the only one. We know that consumer behavior is changing in 2024. People are going to different avenues to find out about businesses, right? TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We have we have the meta extended network, right? Their their display network, which includes a bunch of other websites. Google's own display and extended network, which uh, for paid advertising it includes a bunch of different websites. But now the organic side also includes a bunch of different websites because we know that a local business needs to be on Google Maps. Right. They there's no if, ands, or buts. But how do they climb the ranks of Google Maps? Right. And that those that's touching on the the three local ranking factors: the relevance, the distance, and the prominence. And Google mentions directories in that prominence factor. This is a Google article. You can look it up yourself. I'm not making this up. This is a uh, public for everyone to, to read and to create their own methodology around. This is how we baked our, our methodology. Um, and, and through prominence, we know that Google is indexing these different directory sites like Yelp, like Better Business Bureau, like Chamber of Commerce, MapQuest, even, even Apple Business Connect, even Bing, right? All of these different sites, these different platforms have to do not only with the Google ranking, but where people are making their decisions. We never know where that's going to happen, right? So that's the, the importance in 2024 of organics. You got to be everywhere. You got to cast a large net and then reel them in. And I think you just flipped the idea of GBP on its head. To everyone watching and listening who is maybe less less familiar with Google Business Profile, you would have thought, okay, they're talking about the maps listing. And what we've just said is that no, Google Business Profile 
isn't strictly about just the listing, but rather it encompasses directories. There's also the website, which is a huge dependency and impacts the performance of the Google business profile. So the first thing you need to understand is that it's not just the Google business profile, but it's rather the Google business profile plus directories plus um, the website. And there are even more factors that, that I'm sure will come up as we get through the course of this conversation. And so understanding that user journey, that customer journey, is gonna be very important to understanding why these things matter. And I think we've got a good example on deck to perhaps start that conversation. So there's one client we wanted to uh, focus on today. Henry, you wanna talk a little bit about our highlighted example? Thanks, Jay. I do, I do want to talk about them. We have a great little bed and breakfast client here in tourist area of the United States. And what we can see is that they, not only do they get a lot of traction from the Google business profile, but they're getting traction from a bunch of other different websites like TripAdvisor. Why, why TripAdvisor? Because it's still super relevant to users that are looking to plan a trip. And this is the perfect destination for that. Yelp, Bing, DuckDuckGo, right? So Google is still the most important website and uh, search engine out there, but people are starting to uh, look for alternatives. And DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo uh, have had an increase in their market share with what happened with the uh, COVID pandemic. So, so after that, after the pandemic, like people started to look for alternatives and we can see this in the market share uh, decrease for Google and increase for the other ones. Uh, we're also seeing that for this client particularly, they're getting phone calls, direction requests, and emails directly from their website. After visiting the, the directories on Yelp, people are going to the website to actually make their bookings. And that is what really uh, gives us a lot of the value with the website. We also know that with the latest Google leak, we know how important traffic is to a website. Google is looking at real people, real users going to a specific website. And if it doesn't have traffic, then it devalues the rank. Uh, they also look at bounce rate. They look at uh, engagement within the website, all of these things. And how do they do that? They do that through their own platforms like Google Analytics. If you have it installed, it's going to help you rank because they're using it to rank you. So, so all of these things are, are extremely important to keep in mind and to become educated as marketing and digital marketing changes. And I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, Elena, what are your clients and small businesses out there in the real world? What are they saying and how are they impacted by you know, updates that we see all the time? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the the biggest things I I hear and, and tend to see is, you know, a lot of people are telling them, you know, that we're coming, we found your business from Google, but there's so many different platforms, like you guys are mentioning how they found their business. Did they find their website profile? Did they find them through all these listings, through an advertising product? And at the end of the day, most of them are finding their website organically. They're finding it through the business profile. They're finding them through all of those general listings that, that we're mentioning. Awesome. That's good feedback. And and uh, it was yesterday, one of our colleagues, not yesterday, on Tuesday, one of our colleagues from the advertising department, uh, shout out to Corey, he mentioned something super important, which is with Google Ads, especially with Performance Max and display campaigns, uh, you might not get the conversion right there on the Google ad, but this is an introduction to the brand. And then that conversion can come in many different ways, right? You can come in through the social media, through the directory listings, through the actual website or the GBP. Uh, and Google ads doesn't always count for those conversions, but this is the omni-channel, right? This is the omni-channel approach because consumers are are behaving differently in 2024. Um, things are, are changing, people are becoming more savvy, 
AI is helping people, you know, at, get questions or answered that were very much difficult before, right? You needed a, a research assistant to get things answered now that, you know, AI Gemini's to that level and it can research things, give you links. And that's why consumers are changing, right? And and as as younger consumers become business owners, they also need to change. What would you say, Jay? Here, what is your reaction? I'm um, I'm really so I see lots of change both in how, in what Google is focusing on and how that affects our small to medium sized client base, but also in terms of how we're speaking speaking to it and following uh following along as a company because we're very much aligned with google we know this landscape is changing we know it's more of an audience and interest-based landscape than it than ever before and i think that the first thing my mind goes to is that this is very potentially challenging for a small to medium-sized business that just thinks they're signing on with us for google business profile because it's going to rank higher they're going to get more customer engagement simple simple well it's not so simple anymore and there's a lot that goes into it we talked about the the relevance distance prominence we talked about the directories we talked about the website elena that's a huge expectation pill to swallow potentially and i want to understand how that how these expectations are in the real world when clients come to us how do you sell them the story of that they need they need desperately to understand about everything that we put into it and why that's important for them? What do these early conversations look like? What are they not understanding? What's challenging? What are the humps you have to get over? Talk to us a little bit about what that's like in the real world. Yeah, absolutely. I I think too a lot of um, my clients forget about the the collective effort that really comes with with all of these listings of making sure everything is up to date, making sure that all of the business hours, the information is correct, because a lot of them think, you know, oh, well, everyone's going to Google, we're not going to Bing. But at the end of the day, it's not just, you know, users that are going to these listings. It's Google as well that's that's indexing them, they're taking a look at them. So we have to make sure this business information is correct overall. Again, not just for user value, but for Google who is looking for this information so they can then show them those websites, they can show them the business profile, they feel confident that this is the correct information. They are the most relevant to the person searching. So they're going to show them that business. Well articulated. So it sounds like um, hurdle one can potentially be talking about the importance of the listings. And then it's probably pretty cool to get to show those listings grow over time in terms of value produced from them. Um, what about client contribution, Elena? Because I feel like with, with paid ads, there's an expectation that they put up a budget, clients do, and the phone just starts ringing off the hook and that's it, life is good. I, there's Sure, there's there's rating and marking your calls and other, other pieces of feedback there or client input. But for organic specifically, I feel as though the feedback uh, the contribution required is a, a lot higher. What does that contribution look like in 2024? What is our ideal client bringing to the table for a GDP product? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, it's just going back to, it's it's a really cheesy metaphor and I, I use it all the time for my clients, kind of helps them understand. But I always say your business and your Google business profile are are essentially friends. When you guys you know are first starting out, you you know Google doesn't know who you are. Google doesn't know what services you offer. They don't know about your business. They don't know really anything. So it's kind of up to us to build that up. But for client contribution, we have to then give real life examples. And the biggest part of that is going to be business reviews. Um, the reviews really do play a really big feature in that. And that's really kind of what I hit hit the most is reviews. And then of course, business photos, you know, people really want to see the visual side of thing. If we're just, you know, putting reviews up there, we're putting, you know, different posts, things like that up there, there has to be some type of visual aspect. And the biggest hurdle for me is really kind of showing them how important a photo is, because at the end of the day, you don't really think, you know, well, why is a photo important to be added to a business profile? It's just a picture, you know, of, of an HVAC unit. It's just a picture of, of a furnace. But at the end of the day, it goes back to that collective effort of showing Google we are doing these these jobs. People are happy with them. Look at all these reviews that we got. Oh, so important. You said it. You said it right. Why clients, when I was a DMS as well, clients would always say, what, what do you mean pictures? Use the ones that I gave you. They gave me five at the beginning of the relationship. No, Mr. Client, the reason Google needs those pictures is because it can see those pictures. It has AI in the background. It it has had vision AI in the background for years now. We're just now realizing it. And it can actually see what that picture has. And 
if you use the same picture on your website and on the other directories, it's going to sync it up. It's going to say, hey, this business is actually, you know, doing what it says it's it's doing and it's giving us authentic content and it's consistent throughout our indexing network. So uh, let's bump it up on that local ranking. Great, uh, great summary. Great, great. And you really, alluded to you. it, Henry, but you, you said, and, and to the indexing network, but it's not just the Google business profile where some of these images are, are being seeded to, but it's it's all across the internet through various directories. So why don't you talk to us a little bit, Henry, about what type of information is being pushed across these directories? Give us a sense of scale, how big this network is, um, what's being pushed to it besides images, what else are we updating up there, and, and get a sense of what's really going on behind the scenes that our clients benefit from every day as it's relevant to the list. Right. Well, well, Google in the prominence factor mentions directories, right? But why does it mention directories? Because it needs it to have the same name, address, phone number, categories, services as it does on the GBP. Well, think about it as a as a credit score. If the if experience sees that your name is is Henry Heredia, but you know, the other ones see me as Henry M Heredia, then who am I? Am I Henry Heredia or am I Henry M Heredia? And that brings down my score. Same thing with Google. If if they see that the business name is incorrect uh, on different listings and not the correct one that they have, they're going to devalue that, that ranking score. Um, we have to make sure that the name is is in sync across the board and it has to look like it does in the real world. That's what Google wants. Google wants to basically recreate the real world in their digital world uh, with with prominence, right? That's why if you look at Google Maps, you'll be able to see uh, landmarks, museums, things like that really easy. They have built in prominence because everybody knows about them already. Uh, the prominence that we have to build is for those businesses. Like Elena said, right, it's it's Google needs to get to learn about that business. And that's when the trust happens. They can't be friends without trust. So we need to give them that trust. And you talk about it, too, in your in your LSA layer, right? It's all about trust. So. Uh, definitely, definitely, it's important to to have that same information consistent, same attributes, the same website link, uh, because you never know when, where they're going to come from, right? What if they are on Yelp? There's a lot of users on Yelp looking for businesses, looking for restaurants, looking for HVAC companies and, and towers. And if they find your information correctly, they're going to find you and they're going to reach out to you. It's not just Google anymore. Well said. It's not just Google anymore. And with respect to the directories, not all directories are, are equally important depending on the industry. So when you think about what goes into a product that's going to power the foundation of your online presence, you got to think about directories. And in line with that, um, we you got to think about core data architecture, name, address, phone number, NAP, as Henry stated. Now, along with uh, the core data architecture and all that good stuff, you also got to think about, okay, well, this is simple enough. I'm going to OMG National or another agency because I want more organic calls. It's not that simple, guys. So think about common common operational things that happen over the course of running a business. Say you have an address change or something similar. You change locations. Well, not only do you need to update that on Google Business Profile, you're going to have to go and update that across all your directories. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, your rank is going to suffer, your presence is going to suffer, and your customer engagements are going to suffer. And we want to also get away from this framework of talking about um, Google Business Profile as just calls or thinking about it as just calls. I'm sure that's something that you see, Elena, on the client services side. It's all about those customer engagements over time, which can be many things. Elena, why don't you tell us a little bit about the different types of customer actions that clients can expect from GBP? Yeah, um, I mean, phone calls are are definitely you know important in, in what most people look at because at the end of the day, that's how you can really tell if that was a return on your investment. But on a lot of my most kind of important ones, and again, you kind of mentioned it, it's it's really kind of industry industry based. You know, if you are you know maybe um, you know a, a bed and breakfast, you're going to really want to focus on those direction requests. You're going to want to focus on you know those website visits. Those are going to be really the two kind of bigger ones, depending again on that industry. Um, you know, if you are really trying to build up that brand awareness. If you're running a special on your website, if you're running anything, you know, depending on, um, you know, trying to get more traffic to your name, 
those website visits, again, the direct requests, those are going to be kind of really, really two big, big ones that I, I see a lot. 100%. And like with anything else, at the end of the day, if you can't measure it, you can't really speak to it. And so a really cool tool we have to look at rank at a bird's eye view are our rank grids. We're going to put an image of that up on the screen, but this really allows you to see how your business is changing, you know, month over month, uh, quarter over quarter. And obviously the intent with any good product methodology is to have the product perform better over time. And with GBP, um, simple enough, it's if we do our methodology work really hard, you should be able to see, feel those gains, both in customer actions, as well as your rank over time. Um, and as Elena alluded to that, those KPIs, those metrics, what we focus on is going to be a little bit different depending on your industry, depending on your vertical, um, different customer engagements will have different value to you based on who you are, which is ent entirely sensible. So overall, Henry, it's a lot of ground. We've covered a lot of good ground on GDP. Why don't you wrap it up and, and take us away? Sure will. Sure will. So just wanted to say before we wrap up, definitely agree with phone calls being an important metric and and the other metrics being extremely important as well. But we have to think about how competitive all business has become now in 2024. And if you are getting phone calls through your, your listings organically through your website or even paying for them, you have to work them. You have to work to close the sale. You have to try and be polite, give that user the greatest experience possible and close the sale. A lot of what, what I see is, you know, clients, our clients, they pay us to give them traffic, right? We can't close a deal for them. We're not on that other side of the phone helping them close the deal. But there are a lot of other people that are doing the same services out there competing with them and consumers are savvy you know they're changing they're looking for businesses that not only can do what they're looking for with expertise but also that they're nice to deal with right and they're and that they can rely on them and they have good reviews and all that good stuff that we talked about today but i just want to reinforce the the fact that Business owners need to fight to close their deals because there's a lot of competition out there and that's the beauty of America, right? We live in a capitalist society where everyone has the opportunity to grow. Thank you, Elena, so much for joining us today. Jay, thanks again. Thank you everyone for listening and uh, watching. Uh, love you all. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Elena. See you, everyone.